with me because we're going to celebrate Jesus. full of expectation. Our hearts are full of expectation to encounter you in ways we never thought possible. That it would bring more life, more life into our journey with you. In Jesus' name. Amen? Come on, let's worship together. As we begin this morning, I just want to encourage you to find a posture, a, a place. You're welcome to come up towards the front here and just get our heart's attention on the Lord right now. Sometimes by the time you get here, you're like, it's easy to feel frazzled. So let's just take just a moment, just a few moments. We're just going to pause and the band's going to play and we're just going to get our hearts just completely focused and centered on Jesus. Jesus shine through 
All of the glory and honor and power be unto your name, unto your name. All of the glory and honor and power be unto your name, unto your name. All of the glory and honor and power be unto your name, unto your name. All of the glory.
live from victory. You know that, right? <laughs> Not for it. From it. victims in the room, only victors. without change is just a game. So what needs to change? What needs to shift? What needs to, you know, what scales need to fall? Whatever it is, like, when you encounter Jesus, something changes.
So I'm seeing that picture that Revelation paints of the throne room and the elders casting down their crowns and the whole the whole scene of angels are crying out, holy, holy, holy. And as I'm sitting up here and we're engaged in this time of singing, um, I kept leaning over to Borny and saying, do you hear that? Is that, a, is that a woman with a really high tone in her singing? And uh, I asked Brian the same thing. And what we were hearing was, the angelic were singing along with us, and and we're 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 engaging in what the angels are singing in the exaltation of of the king, in the exaltation of of the majesty of Jesus. So I just want to say, like I feel like they're here to to pull off the restrictions, to pull off the restrictions and singing out. In, the, in response to the majesty of Jesus, to let it flow, to let it flow, to let the, the, the rivers of living water flow from your belly, to let the rivers of living water to flow from your heart. They lift off the restrictions, let it flow, and just continue to sing along with the choir of angels that are enamored and just can't, keep their eyes off the majesty of the king. So I want to just I want to just say one more time if we could just sing that we exalt thee one more time as a family as we engage with what heaven is singing with what heaven is doing that we continue to keep the exaltation of the king at the forefront. King Jesus, we exalt thee. And so I just want to invite our, our worship team to lead us again in that in that in that bit.
bless you, and we look forward to what you got going on for the rest of the morning as we just unpack what's happening and unfold what you got going on in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Hey, bless these, bless these guys. Bless the worship team. Honor them. So thankful for them. Bless the person next to you, right to your left. Tell them how amazing Jesus is. Good morning. Wow, that was amazing. Thank you to our, we have an incredible worship community here. I mean, all of us, you know? Even you at home in your PJs, singing at the top of your lungs. We can hear you over here. Good job. Uh, we're so blessed this morning uh, to be hosting our good friend, Brian Orm, who's going to be uh, taking the, uh, it's not a pulpit anymore, taking the table. <laughs> um, and I want to invite you to prepare for continuing your worship and giving this morning. As you know, we've got a couple of uh, boxes in here that you can um, do that business with the Lord in uh, check or, or envelope, but, and then there's other ways. Uh, through all the platforms and stuff. So as you prepare for that, I'm uh, really excited because we actually have a testimony that I want to release. Um, and I'm going to invite that couple forward in just a minute. But while you're getting all that ready, we're going to talk about a few things coming your way. The first of which is next Sunday. So next Sunday is Independence Day celebration. <laughs> And uh, I, I love this because, like, as soon as we all went down into hibernation and uh, isolation and all the Asians last year, uh, I wanted to, I got put on my heart way early to do a comeback party. Like, don't tell me to sit down and go away. I hate that. Um, and so I started planning this party, like, last time this year. Uh, last year this time. So... We're having a celebration of all things coming out. Well, maybe not all things, but the church, the nation, um, come, coming back. We're going to have a, a barbecue. Uh, it's going to be with Bill. Bill is emptying out his savings account to purchase the very best tri-tip in all of, yes. And I was saying earlier, if you're not a beef eater and you eat that like other stuff, bring that. I'm sure they can throw it on the grill. As long as it doesn't touch any of my food, um, vegetarians and all that. I don't mean to sharp that fake meat stuff. <laughs> We're all inclusive here, so you can bring that. Uh, but we will have a potluck, so bring your side dish and all of that. Um, and then we have, like, just, we're going to enjoy fellowship. So we have um, Kona shaved ice trucks going to come for the kids. And we've got some obstacle course jumpies for out front. I think the age limit is 52. So I'm going to be working that booth, and I'm going to card you. If you're over 52, you cannot go on that. We have the regular jumpy for you with the paramedics. So we're just going to have a fun time. I hope you can make plans to enjoy um, this beautiful campus that the Lord has blessed us with. Um, and we're going to have a great time. Is there a song for that? I feel like I picked the right song for Comeback Party. And with the local DBC News, Cool J with a triumphant comeback. Who knows this song? That's what I thought. But Don't call it a comeback. That's it. My kids are over here. They're totally embarrassed. <laughs> uh, 
Your grandmother was a gangster. <sighs> That's so funny. Anyway, that was LL Cool J for all of you guys, that, all you other white people. <laughs> ah. All right, so after that, we, I'm just giving you a heads up because we have, um, are going to have an amazing time. You're going to love Brian here in a minute. But we've also got Ivan Roman coming to town in a couple weeks. Uh, he's going to be here with us um, stirring, stirring the pot all weekend. And I just want to say this about Saturday night. We just put the flame because that's like the charismatic symbol for rooting around on the floor like, like pigs, you know, like it's going to get crazy. We decided it's for truffles, so it's all good. You know, dirty crying and all that. And if you don't like that stuff, you can come Sunday. He'll be doing our Sunday services. Um, so that's happening. And then also, uh, I want to give a, 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 a little promo for the next round of our inductive Bible study. This class is uh, taught by Dr. and Pastor Micah Haney, who is a professor at Azusa Pacific University. He's um, part of our leader team here. If you don't know who he is, you'll see him at the end of this video. He's got an amazing beard. Um, I am working on mine to try to match his, but um, so he did a round of inductive, inductive Bible study in spring, and it was amazing if you got a chance to go to that. It's just really a class where he's teaching a method on how to study the Bible, and so he taught a little about that, and this is the course that he actually teaches at that collegiate university level pared down a bit for all of us normal people, and, uh, and then he actually uh, walked the class through the book of Jonah. And so this summer, he's going to do that equipping again in the front half of the class, and then they're going to go through a New Testament epistle, a New, a New Testament letter. I forget which one he said. But anyways, if you um, need to be shored up in your love and of studying the word, this is the Tuesday night class for you. So we have a short video of testimonials from round one. It really teaches you to not just read the Bible and understand the surface level, but to really understand what God's telling to you, what God told to the original audience, um, and therefore what it's telling to you. I took this course just trying to kind of brush up on some things. I did take a lot of new takeaways from it because he has just a new perspective on learning the Bible because you do a lot of historical context. So what does the Bible look like? like in the past because the Bible wasn't written to us, it was written for us. So we get to use the Bible as a guide, but it wasn't written to our time. So it's good to know what that looks like. And so there is different tools that he used than what I learned. And so I really appreciated his patience with me and just let me ask questions and just be able to just kind of dive in and have just such a passion that it made me want to learn more about the Bible too. The Bible is deeper than I ever thought it was, and going through this class, inductive Bible study is way more than I thought it was too. So if you want to look at the Bible in a whole new way, you will leave this class and appreciate it much, much more. I would recommend anybody take this for a lot of reasons. Number one, the word is so important, and it can be hard on your own to, to be disciplined enough to actually um, study it, like use the intellect. God said love love him with all our mind, soul, heart, and strength. So the mind too, and, and it, the word just gets richer if you do that through the years. It's hard, hard for me to do that on my own, so I recommend that Bible study for that. But ultimately, really, just the impartation for Micah Haney, I think was incredible. Hi, I'm Micah Haney, and I want to invite you to join me for round two of the inductive Bible study method. Uh, it starts July 6th and it goes through to August 31st. And in this course, we're going to be um, taking the inductive study method and looking at Paul's letter to the Colossians. If you were part of the first course, it's going to give you the opportunity to look at a new uh, portion of scripture using the, the same principles of inductive Bible study. And uh, if, if you're new to the topic, uh, I want to invite you to come and see what inductive Bible study is all about. 
let's let's give <laughs> I feel like that's an applause for your beard. Let's just give it up for Micah Haney's beard. Yes. <laughs> uh, and um, just a quick plug, you know, we have our Bible Fast Pass, which is discipleship, um, classroom style teaching going on during first service, actually for one hour every Sunday. So 9.30 to 10.30 with Pastor Larry. You can jump in, and uh, his sessions are independent of each other. You can catch as many as you can. We did uh, line up some child care uh, last week, so if you are not coming because you have children, um, bring them over, and we can lock them in a closet for that hour while you go. All right? I want to invite up the Lisk family. This is D and Lynette Lisk. Yes. These guys shared with us a testimony last week that actually sprung up from a testimony from Ocille a couple months ago, I think it was, when she was uh, hosting up front. And um, they're going to tell you about uh, the impact that it had on, on the two of them. I've got to start off with a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> for, for those of you who were here last time, you know what I'm talking about. By pop, backed by popular demand. So... Did you hear about the yacht builder that had to work from home? His sales went through the roof. I think you're letting that, that win go to your head a bit. <laughs> Do you, Did you see his shirt? Yes. <laughs> tell dad jokes periodically. Yes, it's good. <laughs> Can you salvage this? I know. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> So I wanted to uh, <laughs> I wanted to share start off by saying um, when Osiel shared that she was going to petition uh, for something specific um, in prayer uh, as she sowed a seed financially she was asking for something specific that Sunday I was sitting right in the back and and I actually was like I asked God for something specific as well financial breakthrough for us and in the midst of uh, what seemed like a string of difficulty and challenges uh, with Dee's work um, and some other things, we got a call, or Dee got a call, or do you want to go? Yeah. Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I want to say is that I'm not working outside the home. I don't work a nine-to-five job. But I just really wanted to make the point that I prayed that prayer for us to sow a seed. And I just felt like it was one thing that came to mind earlier this morning is that um, no matter what, you know, you can, you can sow a seed, you know, and you can partner with what's happening in your home. Yeah, so. so good. I was unaware of her request. Actually, I only found out yesterday. Um, so on Friday, I think the 18th, I got a call from my boss, actually a, a message. And things, as she mentioned, things have been challenging at work. There have been a lot of people who have left petition just got up and moved to another job so it's been challenging for our group and so I thought this was yet another challenging conversation so little did I know when I entered the the meeting he said oh don't worry this is good news um, and HR and management had selected some engineers to get a retention package and I was one of them and so over the next two years they're, they're going to be extra bonuses that's awarded to us. And yeah. And then, and then um, Dee was told, you were told to uh, yeah, give the good news to Yes, some people in my team your... also got bonuses. I got to give some good news as well, pass that along. So that was totally out of the blue and totally a blessing. And as I was thinking about that, I thought about the um, verse in Deuteronomy 28. If I can read that to you. Um, so it says, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. So it made me think about overtaking blessings. And just encouraging you guys. I know we've all made a lot of mistakes. I have, money-wise. But God's blessing is enough. 
I mean, his, his favor, his grace, his goodness is more than enough to compensate for some of the mistakes that we've done. So, And it only takes a seed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so I love this testimony because the testimony, this testimony got released to the family and then breakthrough came for other people in the family. And that's how the favor of God works. Why do we share testimonies of God's goodness in our life? Because it's meant to release that goodness to the, fam to the rest of the family. If we get a blessing, all my kids are going to want to share in my blessing, right? And my husband too. It's for everybody in the family. So when you don't share your breakthrough and your, and your testimony of God's goodness, you're actually ripping people off to share in the favor, to share in the blessing. So I love that this breakthrough came on the heels of this breakthrough. She challenged all of us to be faithful and obedient in what the Lord showed her, us to, to give in planting seeds and whatnot, and then this was the result. Is that good or what? So... I've asked these guys that got the breakthrough to release it over you all this morning. You can you can go for it. This on? Okay. So you can pray, but I'm going to declare the blessings of yes. some of the verses of Deuteronomy 28 over you, and. We know we're on the other side of the cross, so Jesus has already fulfilled the requirements of the law for this, you know, this chapter, and we get to reap the blessings. Yes. So I'll, I'll reread the one that I read and a few more verses afterwards and just receive it. The Lord God will set, all, will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket, so your bank account, and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. So, Lord, we just thank you and praise you for, for who you are. And right now, as, as we're preparing to give, we just um, add and partner with you with the, with the seed that we have. And we trust and believe um, in who you are for financial breakthrough, for your goodness to overtake us, to partner with you um, in breakthrough and what, in what's to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Give it up for these guys. We would love to hear about your breakthroughs, whether they're financial, things you've been interceding for, stuff that happens up in the front with ministry team, like, get it? The sharing of the testimony brings breakthrough and release for everybody. So we got to steward those. So it is my pleasure to say a few things about Brian Orm this morning before I welcome him up to, not the pulpit, but the table. Uh, we met Brian, I think, about three years ago now. Um, and I just wanted to share a few things um, this morning. Um, number one, he's so funny. I just, <laughs> I thought initially when I started listening to him that he's a very serious guy because he's got a very unique slant and voice and language on marrying up the mystical with um, science, with like quantum physics kind of approach, you know? And it's so interesting and, and, and so fresh and all of those things. I thought he was a serious guy for maybe like 10 minutes. And then I realized that this guy's a comedian. <laughs> and then I realized after talking to some folks that he really is a comedian. He actually did stand up. And I thought that was funny too. Um, so you're going to enjoy uh, his delivery this morning. He's just got so, so much to release. Um, but I do want to invite you in uh, in a moment to declare something over yourself because he's the type of guy that I can always count on to rearrange some furniture in my brain. Now, I'm the type of gal that when Micah comes home, I've rearranged the furniture. You know what I mean? I get tired of the way that it is or tired of the color of my hair or whatever. 
And I'm just inviting us into a place of transformation. You know, that, that there's this thing about, we sang about it this morning, about opening our hearts up wider, wider to what the Holy Spirit wants to deposit. And sometimes that looks like a stretching. Stretch that canvas, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm just inviting all of you into that this morning so that Holy Spirit can do the work that he wants to do in rearranging some furniture perhaps in, in you this morning. Get a partner with that. Amen. Uh, the other thing I want to say about Brian is that um, we actually started taking some of his financial courses that he offers online. So he does a lot of um, uh, stuff. You can go and find him, and I hope that you do on social media. Brian Orm, he does amazing Zooms and, and meetings and things online um, on the mystical stuff, married in with the science and beautiful things like that, but then he also does this fi kingdom financial stuff that Micah and I started to get equipped in last year. And the one that really rocked our boat was um, this one called crypto onboarding. So I was clueless about all things cri cri cryptocurrency. I was like, I don't get it. And if you are like that and you want to just get your feet wet and understand what the whole enchilada is about, I highly recommend it. Not only that, but we started seeing returns on our investment when we started putting into practice some of the stuff that we learned in that class. Micah shared about it a little bit briefly over the last quarter or so. Um, but I also want to share that he does like this monthly group meeting online with like-minded, kingdom-oriented, entrepreneurial people, which is all of us, right? Right? Um, where you pray together and actually use the prophetic gifting, the Holy Spirit, to um, collaborate and determine where and how to invest. So they've got such an awesome track record, actually, in hearing the Holy Spirit together and then investing accordingly. Does that sound supernatural? Yay, it sure does. So I want to just, you know, say if, you, if any of that in sparks interest, Please go find all this stuff online on social media and you won't regret it. So put your hand over your heart. Repeat after me. Jesus, <laughs> I give you permission to rearrange the furniture in my brain this morning. I'm not afraid. I know you're here. Holy Spirit, I thank you that I have more faith in your ability to lead and guide me to all truth, then faith in the enemy's ability to get me, in Jesus' name. Do you believe that? All right, so would you stand and welcome this morning prophet Brian Orm. Good morning. Good to see you. You guys doing good? Yeah? Feeling good? Worship was awesome. That was great. Little angelic choir in the background. That's good. It's fun. No, it's really great to be back with you guys. Been looking forward to being here. My family can't be here. My daughter got four wisdom teeth pulled. Do you remember this? Her cheeks are like, so she's in recovery mode, doing well, a lot better than I did. I had four pulled. It was like, I look like an alien creature coming out. <laughs> but they're doing really well, having a good time. And I wanted to piggyback off of the, the finance piece, you know, because Christians get a little weird about money. It's like weird, awkward. And it reveals kind of the dysfunctional relationship we have with money. And it's important to understand that we have dominion over money, just like we have dominion over time. Anything that's created, we have dominion over except each other, right? And so I was on a walk one day, and God asked me a question. He likes questions. Bill, is that your phone? Come on. Come on, Bill. 
it better be your wife. <laughs> so I'm on this walk, having a good time. God says, hey, why is my body having a difficult time having significant influence in cities around the world? So I started coming up with answers that I thought were pretty good. No, no, that's not it. That's not it. Okay, what is it? He says, because the body has a hard time multiplying money. I said, well, what do you mean? He says, well, the cities rejoice when the righteous prosper. In the parable of the talents, the guy who multiplies the money becomes a governor of ten cities. His influence goes from multiplying money to ten cities. That's a pretty big leap in that promotion. So there's something about the stewardship of resource. Now, the good news is God's given you power that is specific to the creation of wealth. Deuteronomy 18, I've given you power to create wealth. Not spiritual riches. It's talking about money. Now, prosperity is simply the byproduct of a relationship with God. It's not the goal. The more you know your abundant father, the more abundance you will have. Now, you might say, well, I don't, I don't understand at all how to be financially literate. Well, you do have the mind of Christ. There's that. <laughs> So like that cryptocurrency group, we have people from all over the world, and we pray. Now, there's a wide spectrum of experience. You know, we've got Jedis that are in there. We've got people, this is brand new. And we prophetically pray, God, what are a couple of coins that are going to do well in the next 30 days? And so they hear God. And we've done it since the month of October. In all the months we've done it, there's only been one coin we were off. Every single month. Well, why would God do this? Well, he wants the cities to rejoice. He wants the nations to be blessed and the kingdom to advance. In order for that to happen, there has to be resource. Yeah. You know. Like when God feeds people, there's leftovers. Like what's the point of leftovers? Everybody's full. It's just a sign of there's more than enough. There's always more than enough. So one of the things you can ask God is, God, would you give me a greater capacity to understand monetary energy so that I could faithfully steward resource to see it multiply so that the nations are blessed, families are blessed, and I can be a blessing? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. If you could pray, we're going to jump into some stuff, but real quick, I want to share this. About a year ago, almost to the day, I was doing a coaching session with a lady. I do some business coaching. And she was working on this kind of quasi-psychological, nutritional type retreats for women. Like really high end. I mean, it was like 10000 a person, I think. $10,000. And so as she's sharing this stuff, God says, hey, what do you think that was about those retreats with yogis and shamans? I'm like, I don't know. I've never been there, but I'm sure they're interesting and eclectic gatherings, I don't know. And he says, well, where's the kingdom version? I said, I don't know. So I get off the, se the session, I Google, and I'm looking up all the stuff that I could find, and I couldn't find anything. So I called some friends who travel all the world, and I said, hey, in all of your travels, have you ever seen or heard of a kingdom version of a retreat that like yogis and shamans do? No. So I go back to Jesus, and I said, I assume you're bringing this up to me because you want me to do something about this. He says, yeah, I want you to start this. So I called my friend Arun. Arun and I are good friends. We've done some mystical schools together. We're doing one called Nura Institute right now. And I said, I got a crazy idea. I said, what if we do spiritual retreats that are Christ-centered, where you have guided meditations, breath work, cold therapy, meditation, all the stuff, and it aligns with Christ, and we bring the kingdom to the spiritual wellness industry. He says, let's do it. So my, my request is that you'd pray with us. We're in a grant pipeline, and we're hoping for the grant. It could hit any day. So would you just agree with us? The grant will enable us to be able to get positioned in a behemoth of an industry 
to see the kingdom come in some really fun ways. And so, and we'd love to have you. We're going to have two night retreats, four night retreats. It's always going to be beautiful locations and luxurious accommodations. So it's going to be lots of fun. You can check it out. We have our phase one of the website, Tri-Send. It's like Transcend, Tri-Send, spirit, soul, body. So Tri-Send, S-C-E-N-D, Tri-SendRetreats.com. You can check that out. You can sign up, and we'll let you know when our first one's going to be rolling out. Cool? Yeah? All right. I'm going to take a swig. My throat's a little dry. Is that all right? Does that offend you that I'm taking a drink? (laughs) I did do stand-up comedy for a while. And, you know, churches were the hardest groups. It's true. Some just have religious panties very tightly wound. (laughs) It's hard to get them to laugh. It's like, you can't make me laugh. My religion has made me bitter, so. My worst show, though, I I would try to do it if it was like a church setting, and I would always say, let's not do it at the church, because people come into a church and they become sometimes, you know, different. I said, let's do like an external facility, coffee shop, stuff like that. So this church is like, hey, we got this cool coffee shop. I show up, and it is. It's cool. It's got the vibe. And then about halfway into it, everything's going good. And then a lady gets up and says, we got some church announcements. I'm like, but we're not at church. What are we doing? And then she says, hey, there's a special announcement from Sally tonight. Sally comes up. I'm seeing her traverse from the seat to the microphone, and her bottom lip is quivering. This is not a good sign for a comedy night. (laughs) So she gets up there. She's barely, she goes, everyone knows Bill. We've been wondering what's wrong with Bill. He has terminal cancer. I want Bill to live, but I'm thinking, this is not, (laughs) this is not helpful for the transition. So this is her prayer. Everyone's crying because this is the first time they're hearing about Bill. Everyone is crying. Her prayer is, God, help Bill to live. We want him to live. Brian, come on up. (laughs) So I'm, I'm looking at this lady like, no, this is not. I mean, what do you do? Speaking of cancer, you know, reminds me of a time that. (laughs) <laughs> so I got up and just simply said, hey, let's ponder and pray about Bill, and I'm just going to go back and sit down. Okay, so my worst show. All right, let's do this. You ready? So your theology shapes your psychology, which governs your physiology, which impacts the cosmology. How you see God, your theology. And everyone has a theology. Even atheists have theologies about God. And it shapes everything you think about, not just things about God, everything. How you relate to people, how do you relate to money, how you relate to time, how do you steward, what's, what's your work ethic, all of that is flowing from your perspective of God. So that shapes everything you think about. And then what you think about governs your physiology, your house of genetics is governed by your thinking. The language of your brain is thoughts. The language of your heart is beliefs. The language of your body is emotions. So when those things are out of sync, there are some issues going on. So it's important that we're aligned with the heart of God and the mind of God. I loved how our sister earlier said about loving God with our mind. There's something, I I felt like I kind of had to choose in different environments. Like, oh, did we stop thinking? Is it just believing now? Okay, okay. Because I thought we were thinking, but I guess we'll turn that off and just believe. And then sometimes it's like, we're just going to think. We don't believe. We don't, we never step out beyond what we can understand. Well, it's both. 
We can believe and we can think at the same time. It's possible. It really is. And so as our physiology is being governed, governed by our thinking, that then impacts the cosmology, all of creation. Your choice to see your mind renewed or not impacts creation. Why? Because everything's connected. Like, I don't want to freak you out, but there are parts of you that are in other parts of the universe right now at a subatomic level. So, like, you're out there. <laughs> like, literally out there. <laughs> Colossians 1, 15 and 20 says this, Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him. This is a key for us today, through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together, holds together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to God's self all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. What were the first words out of God's mouth? Let there be light. Was that the sun, moon, or stars? No. Those came later. So what is let there be light? Let there be Jesus. John chapter 1. Everything invisible and visible, we just read it in Colossians as well, came into existence through Christ. The only thing that can take what's in the unseen and bring it into the seen is light. It is the only transitioning agent. Light is omnipresent. You want proof that God is everywhere? Study light. It's literally everywhere in all time and in all space, all the time. So the Holy Spirit's brooding over the waters, which means vi vibrate, vibrational frequency over water, and the Father begins to sing because everything's music and math. Let there be light. Jesus comes in as the transitioning agent so that what is in the unseen can come into the seen. So physical matter and energy are the physical demonstration of the spiritual substance of Christ. So people talk about energy. Uh, we're into energy and vibrations. And I'm sending you good vibes. What does that even mean? Is that helpful at all? What happens is people begin to deify energy. Energy is simply the demonstration of the spiritual substance of Christ. There is energy. There is frequency, 100%. But it's simply flowing from the one through which everything visible came into existence. The transitioning agent. In the book of Revelation, it says there's no sun and there's no moon. There's no need for Jesus is the light. He's the lamp of the heavens. He's the light of the world. But then it gets crazy because after his stint on the earth, and he's like, hey, guys, peace out. It's going to be good. It's going to be better. <laughs> it is. I know it feels horrible right now, but it's going to be better. And then he calls us in Matthew 5, you're the light of the world. We're the sons of light, the children of light. We're likened to the sun. We're likened to the stars. Abraham was promised two types of seed. Star seed is us. We're the above born. Right? 
Like you're born again, not of location, but of revelation. You're the above born. I'm not just rearranging furniture. I'm kicking over your chairs, okay? <laughs> Get out of those furniture. <laughs> Get this furniture out of my face. No. <laughs> Helping us to understand not just who we are in Christ, but what we are in Christ. You are the transitioning agent now. You. Between the unseen and the seen, you are the transition agent. You're the bridge. You're Jacob's ladder. The ascending and descending, the angelic. The staircase, you know your DNA, that's a staircase. So when your mind is renewed, it actually transfigures your DNA. Because the renewal of the mind is about transfiguration, which is all about light. And then there's a transgenerational epigenetic inheritance, meaning what has been deposited in your DNA affects four generations ahead. Because your DNA is multidimensional. That's how that works. <laughs> Remember, Levi was in the loins of Abraham be generations before he w came into existence? Okay. <laughs> it's like if you take a picture of your brain and a picture of the cosmos, galaxies, and no one told you the difference, you wouldn't know the difference. They look exactly the same. So there's a whole universe in your head. And some of you right now are like astronauts <laughs> floating somewhere else. You're going back on the timeline to the past that doesn't exist. I should have done that better. I wonder if I... And it feels real, but it's an illusion. But see, the way the quantum world works is observation. Reality is framed up when there's an observer. So let there be light. It's not just a transitioning agent. It's an observer through which everything would come into existence. And then he would hold it all together. Do you know light holds everything together? Without light, you wouldn't exist. Do this with your hands right now. Push against your hands. The reason your hands don't go through each other is because of light. It's the glue. Now, Jesus and us in Christ, the laws of nature, the laws of physics are optional. So he would walk through a wall. He would walk on water. He's like, thank you, physics. Not today. <laughs> I'll tiptoe above you today. <laughs> so you are the transitioning agent so that which, that which is not seen yet can be seen. How many of you have ever been involved in someone being healed? You prayed for them and they were healed. You are a transitioning agent. What was unseen now manifests in the body. It's seen. They're healed. Very cool. You're the portal. You are literally a portal. But what do you mean, brother? Well, uh, the creator of the universe is actually one with you. Like, literally one with you. So when someone encounters you, they encounter the possibility of another world.
well, I'm just little old me. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to survive in life, you know. Oh, I'm sorry, you're a new creation, excuse me? You're something the earth has not beheld before? You're something creation is responding to? Because creation has it hardwired in every species on the planet, whether it be animal, fish, bird, plant, tree, nebula, whatever it is. It's hardwired to respond to you. So there's no just, I'm just little old me. God created me to be a wallflower. I just blend in over here. I'm only the light of the world, so I'll just blend in. I don't have anything to say. I only have the voice of all creation inside of me, so I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> The righteous are to be as bold as a sloth. But no, no, it's not a sloth. <laughs> there was a verse, let me see if I can find it. Ah, we'll go somewhere else. So I want to share something real quick here. Just put a hand right here and say, I'm going to be okay. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32, one says, give ear, O heavens. This is Moses, of course, speaking. He says, give ear, O heavens, and I will speak. And let the earth hear the words of my mouth. Moses understood this ancient technology that the earth responds to the sons and daughters of God. That the earth can actually hear you. Yes. You want to hear a really crazy one? Let's get crazy. Job 12, 8. But ask the animals and they will instruct you. Ask the birds of the sky and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth and it will instruct you. Let the fish of the sea inform you. So when I said all of creation like responds to you, like I'm not being metaphorical. I'm saying like literally creation responds to you. Yep. So I have weird stuff with animals. I do. Lots of animal stuff. And so our home that we live in, almost every year there's been some animal that will show up. And typically what happens is it shows up before a season, and that animal speaks to a season that we're going to enter into. I know it sounds crazy. First time it showed up, there were mice hiding in our garage. It's not abnormal, right? So we find the mice, we take care of this. And then what happens, the ministry we were doing at the time, these leaders, secret stuff came up that was going on, and it was exposed. We worked through it, dealt with that, walked through with the people, helped them get healed, all the good stuff. And then guess what? There's no more mice. I've never seen a mouse there in our garage ever again. Then one year we had rats. My wife and I are watching TV. We have this glass window, and there's an orange tree in the back, and I see this orange go boop, and it's like these oranges are dropping. I'm like, what is going on? And there's rats stealing oranges from the tree. It's like a cartoon. I mean, they're just like <laughs> taking them off. It's like, what? <laughs> So what happens? person comes to Christ. They then start pulling people away from what we were doing to start their own thing. Stealing fruit. And it was all the people that were newly Christian. So we work through that. We deal with that. We 
a piece of some stuff. And guess what? There's no more rats. Then one year, there's rabbits. Rabbits. I wake up one morning. The side of her house is a lot of glass doors, and I look, and there's a rat pressed against the glass, or a rabbit looking inside the house. <laughs> and my first thought is, that's weird. That's not normal. So I'm walking over to the rabbit slowly. It's not moving. It's not afraid. And I'm almost against the glass. This thing's just staring. My wife comes out. I'm like, this is not normal, right? <laughs> Everywhere we go, there's rabbits. Everywhere. That year, we saw the biggest growth in our ministry. Crazy multiplication. Here's what's interesting. This year, you know what we've seen again? Rabbits. Everywhere. And I mean, we walk out, my kids walk out, and you're like two, three feet away, and these things don't run away. They just look at you. <laughs> so I said, Lord, like, what, what are you saying? And I heard the Lord say, this is about the multiplication of a resource. And so I want to agree with the testimony that's already been released. And so just receive this for yourself. I just declare over you right now, great multiplication, divine strategy for your family, for your business, that the nations would be blessed, your families would be blessed, the kingdom would advance. I declare divine blueprints. And God, just even say this over yourself right now, I accept the power that you've given me, God, to see resource multiply. Yeah, let it be, in Jesus' name. So let's get back to this. Moses is saying stuff about the earth. In Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. Isaiah 6, 3, and one called to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Do you know that the earth is actually filled with the glory of God? Like, literally. So when people go on a beach barefoot, they're having a good time. You do that, right? It feels good, right? You feel better? You put your feet on the dirt in a prairie. I just feel better. Why do you feel better? Because the glory of God's coming from the surface of the earth that you're connecting to, going from the soles of your feet to the crown of your head. We call it grounding. Yeah, grounding to the glory. So there's a glory in the earth. Then there's a knowledge of the glory of God that covers the earth. Then there's a glory that is in the earth. Everything you see in this room came from the earth. You go to your car, it all came from the earth. So there's supply in the earth. God created the earth to have supply. That the sons and daughters of God would benefit from the supply, including the glory of God in the earth. Now, this whole idea of actually speaking to the earth, the occult's been doing this for generations. The church just needs to kind of catch up. See, what they do is they take some dirt, they curse the dirt, they put it on the building of a business, and the business fails. Why? Because the earth responds to humanity, to obedience or disobedience. The first witness of the fall of humankind was the earth. The first witness of the blood of Christ was the earth. In the garden when everybody's snoozing and he's sweating drops of blood and it hits the earth. So maybe we should speak to creation. Where there's a counterfeit, there's a real. Where there's a counterfeit, there's a real. 
Yeah? It can't be counterfeit if there's not a real. Let's read Job 12, 8 one more time. But ask the animals, and they will instruct you. Ask the birds of the sky, and they will tell you. Or speak to the earth, and it will instruct you. Job 12, 8. So I was on a walk one time. I like to walk. I like to be in nature. And God kind of randomly says, hey, why don't you speak to the earth? Excuse me? I don't. He's like, just speak to the earth. I'm like, what? How do I do this? Like, what? Because just put your hands on the, on the land. So I'm on this little trail. I put my hand on the land. I just began to speak. I, I had to declare blessing over this land. I speak prosperity that what needs to grow will flourish. I speak life. And then as I was praying, the words came out, as a son of light, I bless you. And so I was in Texas in August. We're in this beautiful property in the middle of nowhere. And I mean middle of nowhere. And I'm speaking kind of on this stuff. And they were open to stuff, but nervous. Maybe how some of you feel right now. <laughs> and I said, hey, let's just stop for a moment and just speak to the land around us. Speak to the earth a blessing. So as we do this, it immediately starts pouring rain. Immediately. Crazy thing was, there was zero chance of rain. Nothing in the forecast. Lightning. Thunder. Bah, 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 bah. I mean, it was so loud, the rain coming down. I said, well, the earth is happy that we're doing this. So you have to understand you have a connection to creation. You have a place of dominion that as you speak, because kings exercise their dominion primarily by speaking. Yes. Decree a thing, and it will be established. You've got to open up your mouth and begin to speak. You have to speak what you see so you can see what you spoke. So a transition agent sees something in the unseen and then begins to declare it, and then it begins to manifest in the scene. The disconnect happens when the language of our heart, which is beliefs again, when our beliefs undermine the declaration. We don't actually believe what we're declaring. <laughs> We've all been there, right? So I was in a meeting, get a word of knowledge for healing of a back injury, and two women stand up. And I said, do you believe God can heal you? And they're like, yes. They're, they're into it, right? Very animated. God says, they don't. <laughs> I said, so, like, do you believe 100% right now God can heal you? And they're like, yeah. And it wasn't as, as animated. And the third time I said, I'm talking like right now, do you believe? Well, we've been prayed for a lot. Okay. That's okay. So how about you reframe your declaration as I'm coming to understand God can heal me right now. You're being honest with where you are. And guess what happens? They're healed. Been prayed for many, many other times. Uh, standing on a declaration, but their belief system was like, no. So then they reframe it to say, this is where I'm at today. It's like the guy says, help me with my unbelief. He's not like, I'm a believer. It's like, just help me with my unbelief. This is where I am. Be honest with where you are. Honesty and transparency are the hinges on the door of your breakthrough. Yep. <laughs> so I want to encourage you to do something. You either rent or own. Either way, you have authority on that property. Begin to walk your property, lay hands on the soil. I speak blessing over this land. I'm a son, a daughter of light. I have dominion. I speak blessing. I call forth supply from the earth for my family and that the kingdom would advance. 
There's a lot of supply in the earth. And then walk on the beach barefoot. And just say, I just received the glory of God in the earth. That's coming up through my body, affecting every cell, every system, every bone. I receive the glory at a cellular level. Yeah. It's true. So I had people do this in Texas. They went home. One couple, there was an area of their property, nothing could grow. So what did they do? I speak blessing over this land. It would flourish. They send me this video. They lift their hand, and immediately there's a sprout. (laughs) Stuff's growing now. Why? Because they took the rightful place. Like, I love sonship. Sonship is a foundation. It is not the end. Sonship is unto kingship. Like, there's a lot of identity stuff. Love identity stuff, but can we, like, you know, maybe go a little beyond that? We have an identity class. It's the 7,000th time we've done it. And we just hope you'd go through it one more time. It's like, we, we know. Okay? So as we stand on this revelation of sonship, which is amazing, we can then begin to function as a king in the earth that exercises their dominion by speaking. Speak to the mountain. Don't speak to God about the mountain. You speak to the mountain. Speak to the obstruction. So the enemy will work very hard, especially early on in life, to get you to not value your voice. To be afraid to speak up. Be quiet. Shh. It's too loud. Be quiet. You don't have anything to say, anything good to say. You have nothing to contribute. So just be quiet. And then religion gets involved which is super helpful, right? (laughs) Yeah, just be quiet. Just be very solemn. Don't speak at all. This is not how God designed you. He designed you to speak. He designed you as a transitioning agent between the unseen and the seen to be a bridge through which that which God wants to release, he could do it himself. He's chosen you. He could just come in and be like, boom, fireworks, unicorns, like whatever he wants to do, he could do. (laughs) He's like, yeah, I'm going to choose you. A little messed up, but stuff grows in a mess, so we're going to be okay. (laughs) You can't see growth without a mess. You go to water a plant, it becomes a mess. It's okay. You doing okay? Yeah. (laughs) Let's do this. Why don't you guys stand? We're going to do some stuff. I'm going to take another swig. Enjoy what came from the earth. And you water the earth because of the water that comes out of your belly. It's from another dimension, but it affects and waters creation. Yeah. Like you got to understand what you are in Christ. Multidimensional creation. You're affecting the cosmos by saying yes to Jesus, to seeing your mind renewed, it's affecting the cosmos. How amazing is that? All right, close your eyes. Or keep them open if you like to be in control. <laughs> Lift your hands up like you're just going to receive a gift from your Father.
And just ask your Father, Father, what's something I need to see right now? And as he begins to reveal whatever he's revealing to you, whether it applies to you as an individual, maybe it's something for your family or your business or this church, whatever it might be. Ask the Father, does my belief system align with what I'm seeing? And if it doesn't, it's okay. Because we're about to make a declaration from what you're seeing on an individual level. I'm going to have you make a declaration, but I want you to frame it. If you don't believe it 100% right now, that's okay. Reframe it. I'm coming to understand. Fill in the blank. So as you've seen and you've heard, does my belief align? Now make that declaration. You're a king in the kingdom. Kings exercise their dominion by speaking. So I want you to begin to speak out loud. Use your voice. Oh, that's really quiet. <laughs> None of this. Speak it. With the authority Christ has given you, speak that out. He's given you dominion in creation. Speak it out. I call out the voice he's placed inside of you, that the righteous are to be as bold as a lion. I call the boldness outside of you, that he's placed within you, the fire that he's placed inside of you. So I just declare synchronicity to the language of our brain, our thoughts, the language of our body, our emotions, and the language of our heart beliefs. I declare synchronicity to these things. Yeah, come on. And the last thing I'd like to do, I loved we were singing about Glory, just as we were singing, reminded of so many parts of my journey in Christ where there was just such tangible moments in the glory of God and the result of that. And I don't know where you're at in your journey, but like, I, I like want lots more. Like I'm like a hungry hippo, you know the game? It's like, I want all of those balls, okay? Anything... <laughs> And so if you're just in a space like I've encountered him, I've had beautiful experiences with him, but I know there's more to this journey. I just want to invite you up here to stand. If you don't want that, that's okay. It's okay. We're going to pray. Yeah, come on up. Squeeze in. So everybody, yes. That's good. That's good. <laughs> so while you're coming up, those that are standing here already, just begin to engage with Holy Spirit. The way that you engage with him. Just know we're not striving right now. We're not trying to get somewhere. You already are there. We're not trying to get something from God. He's, he's given us his fullness, John 1, 16. So we're just engaging with all that he's placed inside of us. He's in us. We're one with him. So even just speak this over yourself. I'm one with him. I'm fused to Christ. So I declare that heightened awareness, Jesus, of our oneness. Our life is moving at the speed of our awareness of oneness, the pace of grace. So, Lord, we are hungry hippos. 
<laughs> we, we want to know you more. So anything that's hindered that pursuit, whether it's a thought, a belief, we just push it to the side. We push anything to the side. Even if you want to do a prophetic act, I'm just pushing anything to the side. I, I just want your face. I want your eyes. I want to look at you in the eyes, the fire that's in his eyes. And then just begin to receive. You're a sponge. Big old sponge. Jesus will start oozing stuff. <laughs> and that sponge, you're saying, here it comes. <laughs> like a shamwow. I'm a big shamwow. Remember the shamwow? Could dry an entire car. <laughs> so just receive. I'm going to be popping around. Mike, I'm sure if you have prayer team, and we're just be popping around. Just stay in that space. If we've got background music, got to have background music, right? <laughs> I think in heaven there will always be background music going on. See, I just bless your sons and daughters, Father. Thank you. I just honor who you are in the kingdom, what you've been called to release into the earth, the anointing, the calling, the gifting. I just declare an increased awareness of your position in Christ as a son, as a daughter, and as a king, a queen in the kingdom. So we just are open. The book is open. The door is open. We want to experience you more. Let your glory come. Let your glory fall. Just in times past, throughout the timeline when your glory would manifest, do it again, Lord. Whoa, do it again, Lord. Do it again, Lord. We're thankful for every part of our journey, but we know there's more. We're thankful for every encounter, but we know there's more. Every taste, we know there's more. We want to taste and see that you are good. So just receive, engage with him. So if you're on, if you're on the ministry team, I invite you to go around in twos. One person can bless what God's doing. Have a catcher, please. Obviously. Uh, our staff, moms and dads, go around. If you, if you would, to go minister to people, that'd be amazing. Just bless what you're doing, Holy Spirit. ministry team, feel free to go around and lay hands and bless people with their what Holy Spirit is doing. If you're on the young adult leader team, go around and feel free to bless what the Holy Spirit is doing. There's a lot of people up here. Just partner with what he's doing. Go together two at a time. and fathers there's lots of people up here still waiting to be prayed for if you could walk around bless them 
bless what the Lord's doing. Thanks, Jesus. encourage you to stay in this space. Let God do what he's going to do. Just enjoy what he's giving you, what you're receiving. So if you are needing to go home, that's fine. If you're sitting out there, this is going to be the conclusion of the time that we're spending together. But you're in no rush to leave. Just enjoy what God's doing. We bless you to have an amazing day, an amazing week. Go out and be the light. In Jesus' name. <laughs>